But we talk to ourselves constantly in very negative terms. And one of the things we do, Dr. Ellis, Albert Ellis, a famous pioneer in cognitive behavioral psychology, called it mustipation. Mustipation. Mustipation is when it's not nearly as pleasant as its namesake. Okay, mustipation is when we tell the world it must be this way. I can't stand it if this is not this way. People must love me. People must understand that I'm a good person. My boss must understand that I work so hard. My partner must understand that I am so loving and so giving and so accommodating. My children must appreciate everything that I do for them. And you know what? None of it's true. Nobody has to do any of that. It would be nice if they did. I would like very much if everyone always appreciated everything I do for them. But you know what? Many times they don't. Not only don't they appreciate sometimes what I do for them, they don't even want me to have done it. And then, if you're not careful, you can get all pissed off. Look at the nice thing I did for them and they didn't even appreciate it. Well, did they ask you to do it? No. Did they ever say to you they wanted you to do it? No. So why'd you do it? I thought it would be nice. Well, good. You did it. You thought it would be nice. That's it. But they don't appreciate me. They don't have to appreciate you. You appreciate you. Appreciate yourself. The world does not have to conform to our expectations. And the more we insist it does, the more miserable we're going to be. So we don't want to must be. But we also don't want to awfulize. So awfulize is very similar to must be. Awfulizing is, oh, it's the, you say to somebody, well, what happened? Well, oh, God, it's awful. It's horrible. <laughs> what do you mean it's awful? It's horrible. Oh, I can't even, I can't even talk about it. It's the worst thing. It's the worst? Well, what happened? Who died? No, nobody died. <laughs> Did your house burn down? No. House didn't burn down. Did uh, did your spouse leave you? No, no, my spouse didn't leave me. Children dead? No, no. God forbid. No, you sick. How can you say that? So, so what happened? Well, you know that it was this item on QVC that I really wanted, and I called too late. They sold the last one, and that's horrible. Yeah. Oh my God, I really wanted it. That's all. That's terrible. You know, most of what we say is terrible. Most of what we argue with other people about is meaningless. Think about the worst arguments you've ever had with people that you care about. If you had just said, fine, we'll do it your way, would the, your life have truly been over? Would things have truly been miserable? Most of the things that people fight about don't amount to anything. You know, people fight about what restaurants to go to. They fight about what color carpet to get. They fight about what cable stations they're going to have. What do you care? You're going to die. Deal with it. We're all going to die. So what does the color of the carpet matter? Well, I, I, when I die, I don't want to stay in the carpet. And these are demands that we make on the world. Okay, we make demands on other people, we make demands on the world. You know, we tell children, children start to get verbal, and around three or four, you're bound to hear from any child the words, it's not fair. <coughs> and what do adults usually say to kids when they say it's not fair? Life's not fair. Life's not fair. Right. But I can't tell you how many adults have told me it's not fair. I don't know, it's like a nice lesson to teach kids. It's not fair. Well, life isn't fair. Get over it, kid. Life isn't fair. But we don't get over it. In spite of the fact that we know better, we actually think, people actually think that they should get what's coming to them in a positive way. And other people should get what's going coming to them in a negative way. That's generally the way people work it out, you know? And then, of course, they say, you know, good people finish last and all that. That's not true. 
Some good people finish first, and some bad people finish first. You know why? Because life isn't fair. And you don't have to have it fair. The only problem is when you demand that things have to be fair. People have to love me the way I love them. People have to give me what I give them. People have to appreciate me the way that I appreciate them. And you know what? They don't. They don't. And this is the beauty of it. If you can hit that switch in your head, if you can always remind yourself, well, I don't have to do what I want to do. The world doesn't owe me reciprocity. And if you can make that your friend, you can be a lot happier. Now, it's always nice when people reciprocate. You know, it's always nice. But a lot of times they don't. You know, there are people who are very good at being generous, and then there are people who really suck at being generous. You know, they're stingy. I, uh, I actually, I'm always happy that my wife doesn't come to these talks because I use her sometimes. As an but I actually uh, used to argue with my wife about reciprocity. I don't do that anymore. I haven't done that in about 20 years because I learned. Because my wife taught me what she said to me, which was great, although it really annoyed me at the time. She said, I, I said to her, all I want is that you treat me the way that I treat you. And she said, but you're a nicer person than I am. And I was like, initially I was like, you're going to use that against me? I can't believe it. And then I realized, yeah, I am. So I have a choice. I can be a nice guy. I can be nicer. Or I can say, well, because you're not going to reciprocate, I am now going to be miserable. And that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. If you want to do something nice for somebody, 